Hey, this is Presh Walker. Here's how you can steal a piece of chocolate and get away with it. Take this square of chocolate and eat it. Nom, nom. Divide the remaining chocolate into four pieces. We'll move the blue triangle out of the way. Then we move the red triangle. We slide the yellow piece like it's a game of Tetris and bring the red and blue triangles back together. And voila! And before anyone can figure it out, you put it back together and you can do it all over again. This is truly one of the greatest mathematical illusions I've ever seen. How is it possible to remove a piece of chocolate and still end up with the same original area? It doesn't seem possible. So what is going on? So in order to understand this, let's solve a related question. I saw an interesting question on Reddit Ask Math that goes like this. We have this diagram where the height is equal to 5 centimeters and the width is equal to 13 centimeters. The blue triangle on the right has a base that's equal to 5 centimeters. Then from the top of this triangle to the top of the diagram is a dimension of 3 centimeters. So we have two shaded blue triangles. The question is, what is the total area that's shaded in blue? So how can we figure this out? So in Reddit Ask Math, there were two different approaches and the person wanted to understand why they were giving different answers. So here's one way to solve the problem. So first, let's calculate the height of the blue triangle on the right. So the total figure has a height of five centimeters then we have three centimeters to the top. So five minus three is equal to a total of two centimeters. So that's the height of the triangle on the right. Now, we know that the total base is 13 centimeters. So if we take 13 minus five, the remaining length will be equal to eight centimeters. So here's one way to calculate the answer. We are going to take the area of the entire diagram, which is a triangle, and then we will subtract the area that's not shaded. So this will be a right triangle that's two centimeters by 13 centimeters. So the total diagram will have a height of five and a base of 13, and then we're going to subtract out a triangle. So this will be a base of eight and a height of two. So the area of a triangle is one half its base times its height. So the first area will be five times 13 divided by two, the second area will be eight times two divided by two. The first area works out to be 32.5. The second area is eight, and that gives the answer of 24.5 square centimeters. So that seems to be the answer for the total area that's shaded in blue. But now here's another way to solve the problem. Method two. What if we calculated the shaded areas directly? So, this large blue triangle has a base of five centimeters and its height is exactly equal to eight centimeters. So this triangle's area will be five times eight divided by two. The other blue triangle will have an area that's two times five divided by two. So we just need to calculate these. So the first area will be equal to 20. The other area will be equal to five. So now we have 20 plus five, which equals 25 square centimeters. And that is the answer for the shaded area. But wait a minute, we've come up with two different answers. In the first method, we have an area of 24.5 square centimeters. And in the second method, we have an answer of 25 square centimeters. So what's going on? How are these two different methods reconcilable? One of them has to be correct and the other one has to be wrong. So which one is correct? So it turns out the first method is wrong and it is in fact the second method that gives the correct answer. So let's see why this is the case. What's wrong with method one? Let's go back to this calculation. So a key assumption is that the entire diagram is a right triangle with a height equal to five and a base equal to 13. This is not true. The entire shape is not actually a one single right triangle. In order to see this, let's look at this right triangle at the top. 
it has a height that's equal to 3 centimeters and a base that's equal to 8 centimeters. So we can look at the slope of this line, in fact, the absolute value of the slope because it's going negative. So this will be 3 over 8, which is 0.375. If we take the arctangent of that, we can figure out the angle of inclination, and that will be equal to approximately 20.6 degrees. Now let's take a look at the other triangle. It has dimensions of 2 by 5. So this will be an absolute value of slope of 2 over 5, which equals 0.4. If we take the arctangent of that, we will get the angle of inclination, and that will be 21.8 degrees approximately. So you can see these two triangles do not have the same slope. In other words, this so-called hypotenuse is not actually a single line. It will have a bend. If we put in an actual triangle that's 5 by 13, you'll see there's a small area that will be different from this. So let's take a look at this a little bit closer. Let's look at the part where the two triangles are joined. If we zoom in, you'll see there is a small kink in this line. It is not going to be a straight line. If we were to extend this line from the bottom triangle, you'll see that it will not match the top triangle. So in fact, this is the visual perception that we can't see when the figure is zoomed out. This is not actually an entire right triangle. So the assumption that this is one triangle and the total area is 5 by 13 over 2 will be wrong, and that's how you get the wrong answer. But we're not done yet. How does this relate to the missing square illusion? So let's take this shape and let's make a red triangle at the top. Let's make a blue triangle here, and then we will have a green and yellow shape, and we have a piece of chocolate right here. So now let's recreate the missing square illusion. We are going to take the shape and we're going to get rid of this purple square. Be gone. Now we put on a grid and we seemingly have a triangle that measures 5 by 13. We are going to rearrange these shapes into another triangle that's 5 by 13 without this missing square. So let's take this red triangle, move it here, move this blue triangle here, and then we will move this green shape and this yellow shape. And we have seemingly created another triangle that's 5 by 13, and it seemingly is the same shapes except for that missing purple square. So where is this missing area coming from? Well, of course, the original triangle is not a true triangle that's 5 by 13. We have some extra area at the top, and in the bottom triangle, it's going to be missing. The two triangles will actually be bowed in, and on the top shape, they'll be bowed out. You can't see it because the shapes are small enough and the slopes are close enough. But if you were to zoom in, you would see there is some extra area in the top shape and in the bottom shape, it will not be there. This same area will be missing at the bottom. And that is how this missing square illusion works. So we have proven that unfortunately you cannot create infinite chocolate. The rules of physics are undefeated. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.